Well, we're going to show you this image, and it may be disturbing to some. It's the cartel. Yeah. Sponsored by Guardio. More on them later. Very quickly before we start, thank you guys for the support on the last video. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy this one as well. Don't forget to sub if you enjoy the content, and let's start. Hi Chris, it's Bella. Um, happy 21st, hope you enjoy yourself. Bye. I first heard about this individual through a video that Turkey Tom made, so big credits to him. This is by far the most disgusting internet troll I've seen, and that's a title that isn't easy to earn. This troll is directly tied to Chris Chan. A guy that had forced intercourse with a 79-year-old biological mother on numerous occasions. The mother couldn't really defend herself nor remember the act happening due to her dementia, which Chris Chan was completely aware of. This information was leaked through a phone call that Chris had with a female. See, any of her past boyfriends and ex-husbands, they haven't really... Yeah, because now you're doing this for your mom, yeah, uh, make sure I'll be there. I'll be there watching you guys, making sure that nobody is trying to... You can even hear in the clip that she encourages Chris's behavior. Her, and I encourage her positively, let her make the first move. And she wanted to do it and she... Oh, she did? Really? She made the first move? Yeah. Oh, oh fun. really? Oh. Wow, yeah. Barbara. <laughs> but only after people started connecting the dots, it was clear who was behind the leak. A woman named Isabella Yankee. Mostly people from Kiwi Farms were digging into this topic. Isabella, as a frequent user of Fortune and Kiwi Farms, knew what these people were capable of, if they really invested time looking into someone, so she tried her best to spread misinformation in an attempt to get investigators off of her. In one instance, she claimed that the person in the call was actually a man, pitching his voice. No one really bought it, so she decided to blame and frame a person that goes by Fiona. Fiona has made it clear that she has a crush on Christian and wants to have intercourse with him. I didn't look too deep into this, so this might be a troll. Well, at least I hope so. Anyway, Isabella's final goal was to convince Chris Chan in ending his own life. On Kiwi Farms, people made the claim that she wanted to use the phone recording as a blackmail to finally make her goal a reality, but she failed. Still, after Chris Chan was trending, she called her group and herself the best troll in history. Besides her affiliation with Chris Chan, her past is very troublesome. This brings us to Guardio, today's sponsor. Guardio is a browser extension which provides real-time protection from all sorts of threats while browsing the web. I mean, I'm regularly researching topics which definitely are somewhat dangerous to look into and being protected at all times is extremely important. In these days, all of our most valuable information, like banking, wallet information, and basically all of our credentials are stored on our browser, making it a goldmine for scammers and hackers. With so much at stake, a dedicated product is needed to keep us safe in this new realm. Guardio detects threats before they reach your browser and cause harm, which differs from traditional solutions that only remove threats once they are on your device. For instance, phishing and other scam sites can trick you into giving away personal information and gain access to your online accounts and devices. Hackers do a great job in disguising these sites to look real, but Guardio not only uses blacklists, it also has in-house features to increase detection of phishing and other malicious sites. Additionally, if you sign up through your mobile phone, you'll be able to scan your phone for existing threats and get real-time alerts once your data is leaked. Guardio has over 1 million active users and is featured on the Chrome Web Store, so it's definitely a trustworthy product. Guardio is also very easy to install, only takes 30 seconds. Go through my link guard.io slash Eudoxia and get 20% off, plus a free security scan and 7 days trial. Back to the video. Isabella was studying at Texas Tech University and was extremely toxic and threatening towards other students. There were numerous students coming forward and accusing her of a lot of very disgusting and nasty things. Apparently, she would go around campus and try tasing other students. She also admitted to having bought a hamster and blown up another one. In total, eight hamsters were affected. After students on the campus tried to defend themselves against her, they would get beaten up by her. She gloated that they sobbed and screamed to stop. There's also video footage to back up the claim of her harassing other students, but I can't show them here. Even after numerous reports about her behavior, the university didn't react. Apparently, there was a lack of evidence. 
Well, Isabella and a friend of hers, equally as crazy by the way, decided to get rid of a Discord server, which they labeled as the chess club server of the university. On there, most things that the students claimed could have been proven through the chat logs. However, after the deletion of the server, the university concluded that it was simply impossible to confirm whether these accounts even belonged to Isabella and her friend. Isabella also had a fetish for feces and just being overall extremely unhygienic. Isabella refuses to use cleaning products like shampoos or just taking a shower. She even has infections on her toenails, resulting in her removing them and gluing them back on. She would also install cameras in the dorm rooms of other students to spy on them and collect blackmail. This way, Isabella got the footage of one girl crying. She would later photoshop text messages to frame the same person as an animal abuser. And she developed a crush for another girl on campus, taking her razor blades and licking them to taste her pubic hair, even going so far to puddle in her urine that she left behind in the shower. In the end, she decided to award her, according to herself. As for how people got access to these chat logs, the one friend that did all of this with Isabella had archives of the Discord server and he decided to leak it, after Isabella was trying to throw him under the bus. The last allegation is that she is collecting CP and wants to touch little girls. She was going around the internet under numerous aliases, two of which shared a lot of very disturbing images on Imgur and a link leading to a tour site infamous for CP. Additionally, others also claim that she was collecting a lot of CP and was listing it in a doc file, but nothing has been conclusively proven. I mean, paradoxically, even after all of this information surfaced and some of these claims are very likely real and can be backed up, the punishments were fairly minor. The Texas Tech University finally suspended her, but only for two years. She shared this on Discord. The police was never involved, at least from the looks of it. And even if they are involved, there is barely any info on this. Also, her parents are very wealthy, so she never had any money issues in her life and will probably never have any. I imagine she'll just go back to university after those two years of suspension, because she really seems to lack self-awareness. This dashcam footage was captured in Nuevo Laredo, Mexico in 2020. A couple just crossed the border to Mexico, where they would encounter a roadblock by multiple cars and people standing nearby. It's all scripted out. The car arrives and one of the cars pulls forward, seemingly letting the driver pass, but a different car starts to block the road. While pulling backwards, the people nearby start knocking on the windows trying to break in. Cartel. Yeah. While this couple got away, we know that others were not as fortunate since there were multiple reports of stolen cars, wallets, and other valuables in the next few days after this recording. Unfortunately, this doesn't seem to be anything unordinary. There are multiple groups that will do this, and mostly tourists and foreigners will fall into these traps. So this topic is very recent. You might be familiar with the YouTuber Shu on Hat. On her Twitter, she made a post on the brand Balenciaga, reading, the brand Balenciaga just did a Interesting photo shoot for the new products recently, which included a very purposely poorly hidden court document about virtual CP. So the photos she attached were available on their website and their Instagram, and they even wiped off all of their posts on there, only to repost the images 12 hours later, but with a slight difference. The controversial posts were now missing. After they were getting called out for it, they started either deleting comments or disabling them altogether. And as of the time looking into this, all of their posts are gone again. On these images, we see children holding teddy bears. These teddy bears, as you can see, have BDSM and overall fetish gear, and this right here is a court case that is peeking out under the purse. So these are Supreme Court documents, which contain a lot of trigger words, so I won't show it here, but basically, the document defines what is understood as CP. 
explaining that even in the case of real children not being involved, the mere depiction or imitation of children with computer-generated images or adults LARPing as children can still be considered as CP. Also allegedly, there were books in the background, which were written by predators, and there were other names and other images which linked to people who have taken illicit photos of real children. Obviously, with the given context, this looks very bad for Balenciaga, so they made a statement on this, reading, We sincerely apologize for any offense our holiday campaign may have caused. Our plush bear bag shouldn't have been featured with children in this campaign. We have immediately removed the campaign from all platforms. We apologize for displaying unsettling documents in our campaign. We take this matter very seriously and are taking legal action against the parties responsible for creating the set and including and approved items for our Spring 23 campaign photoshoot. We strongly condemn abuse of children in any form. We stand for children's safety and well-being. I'ma be real, some of the people diving into this topic on TikTok are seeing connections which clearly aren't there or sound highly implausible, but I'd lie if I said that this topic doesn't seem very shady. I don't really have a strong opinion on this topic since I didn't look too deep into it, but let me know what you think about all of this down below. So normally, this would be in the Reddit's most disturbing post format, but said format will be discontinued since there's just a lack of interest. From here on onward, Reddit-related stuff will either appear in this format or other videos. The user is Kmart made a post roughly two years ago on the RRBI subreddit, reading, any idea what's happening in this photo? Someone in a mom's group I am in on Facebook said someone she knows found this in a book bought at Goodwill. She claims to have given it to police. My first thought was it's probably from a movie but I can't find anything on Tin Eye. Thoughts? Looks like a guy face down on water on the left with his feet bound and on the right a guy with knees up tied to his body. Also Shadow looks like guy holding a gun. Pick here. Now it's pretty difficult to identify stuff in this image, so color corrections were applied on the image to give a clearer picture. We can clearly see a man with his hands on his back. We can only see the upper half of his body, and the lower part seems to be in water. His mouth also seems to be open. It looks like he's communicating with someone. I know it's difficult to really identify it, but there's actually another person on the far left of the image. We can see their legs and feet in the middle of the image, as well as their hands and arms, which are also on their back. He seems to be tied up. On the very far left, we can also see the head of the person and him lying down on his stomach, also in the water. There's a third person in the image, but we can only see their shadow. There's another shadow next to this person of what looks like a car door, and the person seems to be walking towards the car. There's potentially a fourth person on the left corner taking the photo, but this is just speculation. So what is the backstory? To be honest, my initial thought was that this was for a movie or a skit and staged, but there are other theories with real life connections. One of such theories was that it's a person who went missing for 35 years named Teddy Franks. Someone else compared the guy with Christopher Noel Lurette, who is missing since 1977. Both are interesting theories. With Christopher, he was supposed to be leaving in a work truck to come home, but the truck was found wrecked in Amory, Texas, with another person in it who was not Chris Lirette. It's possible that he got abducted and ended up in the situation in the image. Teddy Franks, on the other hand, drove to a store with his sister. Before the sister parked the car, Teddy opened the car door and ran away after seeing a different car pull up. Ever since, he has been missing. The picture that OP shared has ever since been linked to Teddy Franks, but it's very difficult to identify him due to the poor quality of the image. This also was covered by a news agency, and the family was also contacted. Now, they're on a mission to find out if the picture really is related to Teddy Frank's disappearance. They want to know if this photo that was sent to them could be the key to cracking the case. Not knowing what happened to their brother Teddy Franks has haunted Michelle Lowry and Jody Franks for 35 years. He's never had a job since, never had his driver's license renewed since. I see a person who is tied up, they're laying face down. I don't think he's alive, but I don't think that was him in that picture. I still think that this might be from a movie or a skit. Someone in the comments also pointed out that it could be from a movie called Deliverance from 1972. This seems reasonable. While in the movie itself, there is not a scene similar to the one in the image, it could have been filmed and then cut out in the original, and maybe the skit was kept in an extra DVD as a form of outtake or something. Additionally, while the family sees a slight resemblance with their son, they aren't fully convinced either. What do you think? Is this image real? Or is it staged? Let me know down below.
It's a very interesting mystery, and it would be incredibly interesting learning more about the background and context of this image. Felina was a person that was openly fighting against the cartels in the region Tamaulipas. They forced news agencies and media outlets, as well as police to not investigate, report or mention crimes that happened in this region. I think you can probably guess where this will be going. Felina was encouraging people to speak up about these issues and ran a fairly successful Twitter account, which obviously attracted a lot of attention. As her true identity wasn't known yet, she merely received threats over DMs, but was able to continue. Eventually, she made one tweet, basically just completely revealing who she is. She says her real name is Rosario Fuentes Rubio, and that she's a doctor. One of the last few tweets is of her saying, quote, Close your account. Don't risk your families as I have. I ask for forgiveness. The last tweet on her account consists of two images. First one is an image of her standing and looking into the camera. Second one of her not being alive anymore. From the looks of it, the tweets right before the last tweet were made by her, most certainly under duress, but the final posts with the images were obviously made by the perpetrators and then posted on the account. The account was swiftly terminated after this. We know that on the 15th of October, she was abducted by a group of men from her house. They obviously did all of this with the intention of scaring people and following her footsteps. Samantha Walford was a small YouTuber. She was obsessed with becoming internet famous. In the end though, she didn't become YouTube famous, but infamous for a very cruel act. Samantha met her husband in high school at the age of 19. They had five children, including two twins. In 2013, the cracks in their relationship started to show. Her husband Ernie loved to play video games in his free time. In 2014, Ernie would marry a female character in a video game. This made Samantha very upset, and she even threatened to break up with him. To make things right, he decided to propose to her, which she accepted. Financially, the family wasn't doing well. In order to provide for seven people, Ernie had to work two jobs, which still wasn't enough. Samantha now had to come up with a solution, and she did. She believed that starting a YouTube channel and monetizing it would help take the extra load off Ernie. Her videos discussed her passions, personal life, and the struggles of being a young mother of five. Abigail, Ernie's sister, stated that, quote, She kind of started paying less attention to her kids, and she acted like her so-called job was more important than that, and she wanted to be internet famous. The dislike in their personal hobbies was mutual. Ernie didn't like her YouTube account, Samantha disliked him gaming. This was the first nail in the coffin. On the 20th of February 2015, Samantha's mom received a phone call from her daughter, claiming that intruders apparently kidnapped Ernie and she herself was tied up. When police questioned whether she knew the men that abducted Ernie, she revealed she had a fair idea. Samantha told a friend that Ernie has been abusive at home, which another guy overheard and promised her that he would take care of it. Well, the police wasn't convinced. They managed to find out that Samantha was the mastermind behind the abduction of her husband. The man carrying out the plan also claimed that Samantha had been trying to get rid of Ernie numerous times before this incident, but was ultimately unsuccessful. Samantha really wanted Ernie to be gone for good, so the man had to take his life. She was sentenced to 99 years in prison. And so before diving into this topic, I cannot show most of this footage uncensored, since the source footage is already censored for good reason. You'll soon understand why. I've made a thorough video as to why TikTok and some of its users are problematic and truly disgusting, but there are loopholes in the system which appear to be a newer phenomenon. The first example got a lot of attention through a video that Upper Echelon made. In his video, he details that he found a TikTok loophole, where minors would create explicit content and said content would be algorithmically driven, meaning depending on the content you watched, you'd be served very similar content. The TikTok algorithm is similar to the one on YouTube, though it's way less strict, which enables disgusting content to get pushed, which wouldn't work on other social media sites as easily, since they have the necessary filters and moderation tools to block such content. The Wall Street Journal and other mainstream news outlets already confirm that videos of substance abuse and sex are directly served to minors. But in the investigation that Upper Echelon conducted, it was way more disturbing. Upper Echelon tested the algorithm. Within minutes of browsing the live feed tab of TikTok, 
numerous girls, presumably underage, would perform in explicit acts in very revealing clothing. Lifting shirts, bending over, and more were a common occurrence in these streams, after they would receive donations from the viewers. The longer Upper Echelon watched or interacted with these streams, the more he would get recommended of the same content. And obviously, these older men watching these girls and donating to them had no shortage of these streams whatsoever. Interestingly, after he confronted these streamers and asked them if they are aware that older men are watching, some of them acknowledged it and said that they are, to which they were immediately suspended in real time. Other streamers blocked or ignored him when they were confronted, and none of them were suspended. Why are only streamers terminated that acknowledge that older men could be watching? I want to make it clear that we only have his personal investigation as a source, so I'm not claiming that this is 100% true, but if we were to believe him, this seems very suspicious. He mentions that a possible explanation could be that TikTok suspended these streamers since people under 16 aren't allowed on the platform, but this guideline is certainly not being applied accordingly if you literally spend 5 minutes on the platform. There are also code words that these adult men use in order to request the streamer to do something. Fit check means, let us see your stomach, or pull your shirt up, you forgot something, or get something from the back, translates into, show us your behind. Outfit check means, show us your entire body. Others were more obvious, like feet check or socks off. These men would also say that they are willing to pay hundreds of dollars if the streamer would fulfill the request. These code words aren't uncommon in these circles. There were also YouTube videos back then that had people comment in encrypted messages or code words, which were meant only to be understood by like-minded individuals. To undermine the research and give Upper Echelon even more credit, there was a thorough research done by Forbes on the exact same matter and this phenomenon seems to be recreatable. Meaning, if you would make a brand new account, it would take you only a few minutes to stumble upon this rabbit hole yourself. But I obviously strongly discourage you from doing it. In addition to this loophole, OnlyFans creators abuse a very similar loophole in TikTok's algorithm to put their explicit content on the platform as stated by NBC News. Overall, certain underage girls perform in live feeds and accept requests by seemingly older men, which creates a feedback loop to continue this type of behavior. The children understand that as long as they keep accepting these requests, they will get paid. This was episode 13 of the disturbing part of the internet. If you want to watch the previous episode, click here to see it.